Hi there. Thanks for joining CPG Bytes, a series of short video segments from Treasure Data, where we chat about the latest news and industry trends and read between the lines to provide our perspective and insights. So David, my friend, what do you have for us this week? Hey, Stephen, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How about you? Doing really well, thank you. I think uh, summer's hit in the Cincinnati area, so it's nice and warm and sunny here, which is nice. I mean, you're used to that in the California weather, being nice all the time, but we're finally getting some good weather here. But uh, I thought today we'd talk about this, uh, this report that actually just came out from McKinsey last week. They do you know, these surveys with consumers, I call them consumer pulse surveys. This one was about 2,160 consumer adults, U.S. adults were, were interviewed. And the intent of the survey is to, you know, kind of see what's on consumers' minds, you know, what are some of the behaviors and trends and, and whatnot, and kind of then tease out of there the implications for CPG companies. So it's actually pretty, pretty interesting. This one, they just completed, it ran from February 25th to March 1st, so it's fairly recent. So it's taking into account kind of the two big issues that we have, right? The COVID sort of, you know, phasing out a little bit, but still in everybody's mind. But then, of course, inflation, which is just, I think, really, really ramping up. And coming out of this uh, article, they came up with seven kind of insights and recommendations, if you will. I thought there were three that we could talk about today. The, and the first one is around loyalty. And, you know, Stephen, you've talked, we've talked about this numerous times on CPG Bytes, that during the pandemic, people are oftentimes switching brands, both from a CPG perspective, but also retail stores. And I think a lot of that loyalty switching might have been because of supply chain issues, out of stock, stores being closed, so on and so forth. That's kind of changed now, right? Um, supply chain disruption is not as prevalent, stores are open. And what uh, McKinsey found is that, that what they're calling this loyalty shakeup continues. You see it in these stats here. So. This is the percentage of consumers that you know switched um, in the last uh, you know X month shopping trips, and basically it was 33% in September 2020. It's up to 46 in February of 2022, so it's up 13 percentage points. So people are continuing to switch brands now. That could be price related because of inflation, right? But I think what this really shows is that. CPG companies need to understand who their consumers are, make sure they're messaging correctly to them, understanding what their kind of, you know, motivations for buying are, and, you know, maybe even uh, trying to adjust some of their pricing to ensure they, they capture the, 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 uh, the consumers that are price sensitive because of inflation. So again, it's all about knowing your consumer. Um, the second trend here um, is the fact that, uh, what they're calling this omni-channel shopping. And omni-channel shopping here is a little bit broad because it includes, as you see in the statistics down here, things like curbside restaurant pickup, et cetera. But the point here is that this has really become the standard way uh, that consumers shop, right? You see it in the statistic here, three out of four US consumers say that they are shopping both online and in stores, right? So maybe they do the research online and then buy in store or vice versa. And the point here is, it's not like a singular engagement channel anymore or buying journey. You really have to understand all of the touch points with your consumers and really be able to handle and, 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 and utilize that kind of omni-channel uh, kind of journey orchestration, if you will, for all those touch points. The last uh, thing I thought was interesting here is around environmental, social, and governance. Kind of, I always I call that sustainability, but that's it's, it's actually broader than that, but it's kind of my own little sort of catchphrase around this. And what they're finding here is that ESG is still really, really important to consumers. But the problem is that the devil's in the details. And but what I mean by that is it's how consumers are defining ESG and also some of the demographics, if you will, are kind of what, what generation those, those consumers are in. So if we look at some of these factors here, you know, authenticity is one, and health and environment, diversity, equity, and inclusion is another. If we look at these dots, you'll notice that Gen Z, authenticity is really, really important to them, right? Mm -hmm. Not so much for baby boomers. But we look at health and environment, millennials are the ones that that's kind of the, a, a real motivator for them. Again, it's important to um, Gen Zers, but it's actually below the overall average. And so 
the point here is a one size fits all messaging doesn't work, right? You have to understand who your consumers are mm -hmm. and, and what their motivations are so that you actually have can deliver that right message that feels authentic and is going to resonate with them. And so I just found that very interesting. I think a lot of times we think of Gen Zers, especially just being way on the on the right hand side of all of these things. And it surprised me that health and environment, as an example, um, was was more important to millennials. So, um, you know, with all that said, I think if we were to think about what are the what's the common theme here, right? Around loyalty and omnichannel commerce and, and understanding the, the ESG motivations of your consumers, it's around data, right? Yeah. Is having that data to understand your the consumer, to understand how you segment them, to understand how you message and market to them. And if you know, if you really think about that, to do that properly probably requires a fair amount of first party data, which is a bit of the Achilles heel, I think, of a lot of CPG companies. And I would just suggest that, you know, we've talked again about this before on uh, CPG Bytes or viewers may think we're a little bit of a broken record, but maybe like a direct to consumer, I don't necessarily mean direct to consumer commerce necessarily, right? It could be, you know, a loyalty program, it could be a recipe site, whatever, but it, some means of engaging with consumers and getting that first party data, I think is going to be critical to differentiate yourselves with those insights across these different pillars that we talked about. No, that, that that's so true. And and thank you for that list of the latest consumer trends. And, and not only do you list out the top three new trends, but also what CPG companies need to do to capitalize on those new trends and upcoming consumer behaviors, right? And, and you're definitely right in saying that data is the new gold for CPG brands. So, and then we have been talking about that all along, almost uh, in every single CPG Bytes episodes that we, that we do. And, and what was interesting to me is that the consumer loyalty continue to erode. Not only are brands able to capture consumers from the other brands, but the reverse is true as well, right? Your own loyal customers may also be trying out other competitive brands. So in addition to gaining new customers, you also want to keep your own customers loyal and repeat their purchases with you. They already know you, they have purchased your products before. Now show that you care about them by personalizing their experiences with you. You already have the advantage that no one else has, which is their purchase history and the digital body language. Because of your previous interactions, you should be able to provide a better, um, a, a tailored journey than any other new brands that they haven't dealt with before. And, and all that personalization is not one dimensional, right? So you also saw all the omnichannel tactics or touch points that they may have with you. And you still want to provide that personalized experience with every engagement. A case in point, you know, when I call some contact center for an issue, well, I don't want to give out my name, account number, and social security every time I get transferred to someone new. So having getting to know that what your customer and having them to display that they know, know you as well, it's it's crucial. It's 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 vital. And that personalization requires you to know your customers. And just like how we interact with friends or colleagues. You bring up something that you remember about them or a common project that you're working on together, which in turn establishes trust, right? And allows your connection to be that much stronger with your consumers. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's interesting, Stephen, the, the point you, you make, I think oftentimes is overlooked. Mm -hmm. And that is, if this con if the consumer is a, a loyal consumer or buyer of your brand, you do have a leg up because you probably, you might have some data on them Use, use that as your advantage. Make sure that you don't lose them to a competitor. Try to keep, the, the pie is only so big. So the key is to keep your so, pie, so, you know, the, your slice of pie the same size or maybe grow it by pulling in uh, folks from your competitors. So uh, that's actually a really good insight. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, no. Thank you, David, for, for all that new consumer trends um, for the day. And thank you for joining us. Uh, David spoke about DTC as an important channel to gain more first party customer data. And we also have created a new assessment for you to see how you're performing on your DTC journey. So please go to the description below and download the free tool to see how you perform against your DTC peers and the industry. And also we have an upcoming webinar on May the 25th on the topic of mastering the art of decision-making with connected data and accessible insights. 
So please go to, to the Bright Talk link in the descrip description below to join this free webinar between Chezhou Data, AWS, and Slalom. And uh, don't forget, our very own David McCarty will also be on the webinar. So don't miss it um, uh, coming up in two weeks. And for more videos like this, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to turn on the bell for all notifications. We'll be back in two weeks with more topics for CPG Bytes. Talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.